Jibreel is the first living, breathing creature of Allah. He is the first creature that's ever been given a soul. Without any parents, without anything, without anything to, you know, any prerequisites to it. He was simply brought into existence and he was the first thing brought into existence with a soul. How is he brought into existence? You know, when babies are born, they make all these noises and they figure things out, right? They're, they're cute noises sometimes and they're not so cute noises at other times. They make all these noises and they start getting to Baba and Mama or whatever it is that they get to, yeah. right? What about the Malaika? What about Jibreel Islam? When he was brought into existence, what did he say? Right? Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu narrates, مَا نَهَضَ مَلَكٌ حَتَّى قَالْ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ as the angels are brought into existence, they say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power or might except that of God. We have none. <laughs> so, as Jibreel was brought into existence, this first soul, he said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And as these angels are constantly being created, because they're perpetually being created, they have no gender, they have no desires, they have nothing to distract them from worshiping their Creator, they all come into existence saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So that's one interpretation is that he's the first. And there's some evidence to that inshallah ta'ala. Now, how old is Jibreel Aislam? What is his age, right? We said that one of the opinions is that he is the first creature that's been given a spirit. Mm. What is the evidence for that statement? It's the authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَمَّا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ أَرْسَلَ جِبْرِيلِ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ When Allah created paradise and hellfire, he sent Jibreel to go look at Jannah. Which tells you that Jibreel was there before Jannah or Hellfire even existed. Mm. Now obviously human beings and jinn don't, don't come into the picture until after the creation of heaven and hell. All right? And obviously Jibreel is Sayyidul Malaika, he's the chief of the angels, so it makes sense that he's the first of them that's created. So this is our first encounter now that we see between Jibreel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah creates paradise and Hellfire. Mm. And he sends Jibreel to go look at paradise. And he says, Ya Jibreel. He says, Oh Jibreel, idhab ila al-jannah. Go see Jannah. Wanzur ilayha wa ila ma a'adatu li ahliha. Go look at it and see what I've prepared for the inhabitants of it. Now there are, no one's been created yet. But Allah says, Jibreel, go look at it and see what I've prepared for those that will eventually enter into Jannah. And subhanAllah, what's profound about that, you know that new car smell, that new house smell, right? Now with Jannah obviously it always has the new Jannah smell. It always is new, right? It just never gets old, right? But Jibreel is the first one to feast his eyes on that place. With its rivers and palaces and mansions and subhanAllah, everything that he saw. So Jibreel comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sense of excitement. And he says, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَا يَسْمَعُ بِهَا أَحَدٌ إِلَّا دَخَلَهَا He said, I swear by your glory, O Allah, no one's going to hear about this place except that they're going to enter it. I don't care who they are, what kind of creation they are. No one's going to know that a place like this exists and miss, miss out on it. Right? Then Rasulullah said, Allah surrounded Jannah with obstacles, hardships. It's not that easy. He wanted to show Jibreel. It's not like that. He sends Jibreel back to Jannah to look at it again. Jibreel السلام, comes back the first time he was excited. The second time, he's worried. He says, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَقَدْ خِفْتُ أَنْ لَا يَدْخُلُهَا أَحَدْ He said, I swear by your glory, now I'm afraid no one's gonna get into Jannah. Right? How are they gonna get past these hardships and these obstacles? Mm -hmm. Then Allah sent Jibreel to look at hellfire. And He said, look at it and see what I've prepared for its inhabitants. Jibreel came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَا يَسْمَعُ بِهَا أَحَدٌ فَيَدْخُلُهَا He said, I swear by your glory, no one's gonna hear about hellfire and enter it. When people know what hellfire is like, they're going to make sure that they avoid the things that would cause them to enter mm. into it. So no one's going to enter hellfire. Then Allah surrounded hellfire with shahawat, with desires and ease, tests, trials in a different way, bin na'im, right? With goodness. Jibreel goes and he looks at it and he comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَقَدْ خِفْتُ أَن لَا يَنْجُو مِنْهَا أَحَدْ he said, I swear by your glory, now I'm afraid no one's going to be safe from hellfire. Now what this shows you right away, by the way, is that Jibreel has a love for the people of Iman. He has a love for the people of faith before they've even been created. How did Allah put Jibreel to ease? Allah said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The believers have succeeded. 
those who have humility in their prayers. The secret of your success was already put in the moment that hellfire and paradise were created. Before you were created, salah was made the determining factor. Your prayer. Allah tells Jibreel, no, not everyone will enter into hellfire. The believers who have humility in their prayers, they will enter into paradise. They will be saved and they will enter into paradise. SubhanAllah, it starts from there. But this tells us something about Jibreel alayhi salam from the very start, right? What he's like, his character in that regard, his love for Ahlul Iman. Now, what is the relationship then between Allah and Jibreel alayhi salam? Number one, he is Kalimullah min al Malaika. He is the one that Allah speaks to from the angels. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, doesn't Allah speak to all of the angels? No. Just as there are particular human beings that Allah speaks to directly, there are particular angels that Allah speaks to directly. So He speaks to Al Muqassimati Amra, all four of the angels we mentioned that apportion the command of Allah. There are narrations of direct communication between Allah and them. But Allah always speaks directly to Jibreel. So for the other angels, Allah might send Jibreel to them, right? Even the others of Al Muqassimati Amra, those that apportion the command of Allah. Allah never sends another angel to talk to Jibreel. Allah speaks to Jibreel directly. Then Jibreel goes out and delivers the message to the rest of the angels. So he is Kalimullah from the angels. With the prophets, and we see that frequently, and many ahadith will cover it, Nada Jibreel. Allah calls Jibreel, right? Whereas never the opposite where someone else was sent to Jibreel. With the other prophets of Allah, there's not a single prophet of Allah that you study, except that there's a mention of Jibreel. Seriously, just go through Qasas al-Anbiya, the stories of the prophets, you'll find a mention of Jibreel alayhi salam in some way, shape or form. He's got to be there because he has been sent to 124,000 prophets. In the hadith of in Muslim Imam Ahmad, there were 124,000 anbiya. Amongst them, 315 were messengers, were rusul. He has been sent to each and every single one of them to teach them, to raise them, to support them, to protect them. He was there. He's, he's got a first-hand account. What is another title that he has with them? He is Nasir al-Anbiya. He's the one who supports the Prophets. He aids the Prophets. He doesn't just aid them by bringing them revelation. He plays a multitude of roles in all of their lives. In fact, if you go through them quickly, like where are the narrations that mention Jibreel Islam? I'm not going to go into detail with any particular Prophet story, but just some highlights to get an idea. And then we'll move on to the Prophet wasallam. With Adam wasallam. there are narrations that mention Jibreel was the angel that Allah sent to gather the dirt that would be used to create Adam alayhi salam. Are any of them sahih in and of themselves? No, but that shows you where the mentions of Jibreel come. That early on in the very creation of Adam alayhi salam. When Adam alayhi salam was expelled from paradise, did Allah communicate directly with Adam anymore? Did He? No. Now Jibreel becomes the, 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 the uh, intermediary between Allah and Adam alayhi salam. In Jannah, Adam alayhi salam was spoken to directly. And Imam al-Zarqashi rahimahullah says that actually is probably a greater blessing that was taken away from him than Jannah. That Adam used to be spoken to directly from Allah. When he left paradise, Allah started to send Jibreel to him only. Jibreel became the means of communication to Adam alayhi salam. When Adam passes away, they didn't know what to do with his body obviously, because human beings had never experienced death before. Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam and a group of angels they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam. They shrouded Adam alayhi salam. They buried Adam alayhi salam. So he's there from the very start, even with Adam alayhi salam. You also find the narrations obviously that mention him with Idris alayhi salam. Idris, who is Enoch, the son of Sheath, the grandson of Adam alayhi salam. And Idris, what you can take from the narrations about him is that he's a man with ulu al himma. He's a man with high ambitions that it, you know, is very prone to calling people to good and forbidding evil. أَوَّلُ مَنْ خَطَّ القلم, The first one to write with a pen and so on and so forth. A person who loves da'wah. There's a very famous narration about Idris alayhi salam that Idris wanted to know how much time he has left. Why did he want to know how much time he has left? Because, you know, you know for people, for most people, it's that you, know, you want to party it up until the last day. Like if you know the date of your death, well, okay, you know, I'm going to party it up. And then on that day, tawbah. Right? Just have it on your calendar. Repent, then die. Right? It doesn't work that way, right? Is that why Idris wanted to know the date of his death? No. Idris Islam wanted to know the date of his death, or he wanted to know how much time he had left because of his aspirations of da'wah. Because of his, he wanted to know how to adjust his goals accordingly. So he tells Jibreel alayhi salam to find out for him. And the reason why I mention this narration right now is because one thing to note about Jibreel as well, 
He is the only one that can take a prophet through the heavens and bring him down. He's the only one that can ascend or descend with any of the prophets of Allah through the heavens. He takes Idris alayhi salam and he ascends with him. And in this, you know, in, in these athar, which are primarily from the people of the book, he meets the angel of death in the fourth heaven. And in the fourth heaven, Jibreel alayhi salam asks the angel of death that this is the servant of Allah Idris and he wants to know how much time he has left. And the angel of death says, you know, I was amazed when Allah told me to take this man's soul in the fourth heaven. So he dies in the fourth heaven. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, who obviously is the most strict of hadith, he says that these narrations are strengthened and corroborated by the evidence from the Prophet ﷺ that when the Prophet ﷺ went on the night of the Asra'u al-Mi'raj, where did he meet Idris? In the fourth heaven. So Idris is the only man that ever died in the heavens. Right? And Allah, and that's one of the interpretations of وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيَةً That we raised him to a high position. And biblically, Enoch dies in the fourth heaven. Okay, so it's corroborated by the evidence from the Messenger Wasallam as well. So you find that mention of Jibreel responding to the request of a prophet, taking him through the heavens to meet Allah, or to meet the angel of death, uh, to help him, to answer his requests. The most, uh, the most mentions of Jibreel Wasallam with any previous prophet are with Ibrahim and his family. So Ibrahim, who is subhanAllah mentioned so highly by the Prophet this is, this is the mill of Ibrahim, this is the religion, the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You find the mention of Jibreel alayhi salam with Ibrahim on numerous occasions. You find it from the moment that Ibrahim was thrown into that fire. Now Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, when Ibrahim was to be thrown into the fire, all of the angels wanted to help him. Mikael was waiting for a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put the fire out. I mean, Allah could have easily just caused it to storm and the fire goes out. All of the angels are waiting and wondering why there's a delay in the command to do away with the fire or to protect Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Jibreel comes to Ibrahim alayhi salam and he says, Halaka haja? Is there anything you want me to do for you? Ibrahim knows why Jibreel is asking that question. He says, "Amma ilayk fala." He said, "Look, if it's from you, I don't want anything from you." He said, "If it's from Allah, then okay." He recognizes that Jibril was not given a command from Allah to put the fire out. So, if it's from Allah, then I'll take it. If it's from you, Jibril, look, Allah has a plan, right? So, Jibril is telling Ibrahim, "Lima la tasalu? Why don't you just ask him? Just ask Allah. It'll all be dealt with." Ibrahim alayhi salam says, "Ilmuhu bihali kafin an suali." Allah knows my situation. His knowledge of my situation makes it irrelevant for me to ask. Now that's not for us, that's for the Prophets of Allah. Meaning Allah knows, God knows what's happening right now. So Abraham knows that, you know what, Allah is going to make a way out of this. Alright? So Jibreel alayhi salam wants to help him and that's actually the origin of the words according to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and many of the companions of Hasbi Allah wa Ni'ma al-Wakil. That Ibrahim was the first one in that situation to say, Allah is enough for me and He's the best of protectors. And obviously the plan of God, the plan of Allah was what? That the fire wasn't going to burn Abraham. Kuni bardan wa salama. Be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim alayhi salam. Wow, that's a beautiful one about uh, Angel Jibril going to gender and the experience he got. And wow, mind blowing, guys. You know what? If you know when you are in an heavenly place or you're in a very cool place. You'd be excited. The first time he got to the gender, like I said, he was so excited. Then he left. He went the second time. He was worried. You know, there's no way God wants to elevate you or take you higher and you will not go through trials and tribulation. That was a test from God to see how firm and how faithful or how long the angel can be faithful to him and you know it was beautiful i really enjoyed this whole story guys wow thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye